Hi, my name's John, amateur radio call sign M7CPT, also known to the CB crowd as Captain Scarlet. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and hit that bell icon so you get notified when updates get uploaded. Uh, while I'm new to the amateur radio hobby, I do have 30 years experience in CB, so I have been working with radios for quite some time. Please enjoy the video. In this video I'm reviewing the Diamond WD330S which is actually the commercial version of a TTFD or a T2FD which stands for Tilted Terminated Folded Diapole. Before I begin on the Diamond WD330S. I better give you a little bit of history on the uh, actual original antenna. Uh, it was developed in the 1940s by the US Navy for use on ships. This photograph was obtained from Wikipedia with their permission. The design became public in the 1950s and was adopted by amateur radio users. It fell out of use with the advent of shorter wavelengths and low impedance transmitters and antenna feeders. MMANA comes with an antenna design for the uh, TTFD and I thought I'd show you this just so you can pick up some of the important aspects of it. At first glance, on the design at least, it appears to be no different to a standard folded dipole that you'd feed with normal ladder line. However, there is one little interesting detail worth bearing in mind with this. And that is, opposite the feed point, there is a load resistor of 650 ohms in the original design and this al allows it to spread the bandwidth quite considerably. As you can see from the calculations the SWR remains low across almost the, every band from the 160 meter all the way through to the 10 meter band with the only exceptions being round about the 18 meter, 18 megahertz band and the 14 megahertz bands having a slightly higher SWR than the rest but still within most radios ability to tune the antenna if you have an internal tuner however the thing to look at is the gain. Um, it's very little gain on the majority of the bands and you do get some losses as you get towards the lower frequencies. The 160 meter is a band I don't have on my radio and I do not know how usable this one is. So having been through a brief history and analysis of the original design, now to move on to the Diamond WD330S, which is a 10 meter version of the original 25 meter version, and does have some surprising results. As you can see from these pictures, it does not have to be uh, mounted in a tilted position. You can mount it as a horizontal or an inverted V and all will have the same benefits that you get from a normal dipole. Here you can see I mounted it just at fence height only. So it's one meter above the ground at the base of the aerial and 
The reason for this is I'm actually in a valley with very, it makes it difficult to get out, so I need as much of the signal to go upwards as possible. The large black cylinder on the top of the, the ballon is the actual resistor. Uh, the reason Diamond have placed it this way is more than likely to make it easier to support the ballon. In MMANA I made some alterations that uh, to match the diamond design. So you can actually see it it's horizontal as I've got, got it placed rather than tilted as the original design. It's also 10 meters instead of the 25 meters. After measuring the resistor using a multimeter I discovered it was a 1080 ohm resistor and this is most, most likely because of the 10 meter length on the antenna rather than the full 25 meter. As you can see from the calculations the SWR across all the bands has dropped so that now the highest SWR is on the 24 megahertz range of 2.7 uh, 2.07 sorry um, however if you look across at the gain column you will notice that the gain hasn't actually increased that much in fact on the lower frequencies uh, the loss is quite considerable and on the 160 meter band the loss is a minus 60 dBi which may actually be totally unusable not having 160 on my radio I do not know on that one the next few slides are images of a 24 hour period where I was actually using nothing but the antenna um, as you can see this is the 15 meter band and the transmission range is pretty much equal to the reception range. One other detail of note, uh, my license only allows me 10 watts maximum so all these readings are QRP transmissions only. On 17 meters you can see again my reception is equal to the transmission on range for the most part uh, the only exception being Saudi Arabia where they could not hear me on this occasion on route 20 meters my gain also seems to match very closely my reception uh, including being heard in the far side of America and once more on 30 meters uh, gain and reception again pretty much equal uh, including the far side of America both heard and received and even down into Africa and across into Asia on 40 meters we begin to see my reception is actually greater than my transmission um, where I'm able to pick up places in Africa and uh, even as far as Israel on the 80 meter band I'm able to receive the majority of Europe however uh, the transmission is considerably narrowed and most people I can hear cannot hear me this is one reason why I suspect that the 160 meter band may be unusable on this aerial. Whilst the Diamond WD330S does have some drawbacks, especially on the low frequencies, for small gardens and limited space, it may be the best compromise available. The biggest advantage with this antenna is being able to switch bands very quickly and 
maintain a low enough SWR for the majority of radios to, to tune without too much of a problem on their internal tuners only. There are other aerials that produce better results. Um, these are normally things like fan dipoles and self-build antenna. Uh, 